lecture series on complex analysis for undergraduate students. Today's lecture is an application of Cauchy integral formula. In the last lecture, we had seen one application that evaluation of integrals. Today, we will go for the more applications in the analysis as well as with their help how to evaluate certain integrals. So, let us go with the first application the derivative of analytic function. With the help of Cauchy integral formula will prove one important result that analytic function has all the derivatives or all order derivatives and they are also analytic. So, here I am giving you the result. If f z is analytic within and on a simple close contour c or in no domain d and if z naught is any point interior to c then it has derivatives of all orders in D, which are also analytic. The value of derivative at point z naught is given by the formula. The derivative of f at z naught as factorial n divided by 2 pi i integral on the close contour c f z upon z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 with respect to z. So, when I am talking here the domain D, I would mean is that is the domain containing the points on C and interior to C. If the function is analytic within uh, that uh, interior and on the contour, then it will have uh, at all interior points will have uh, that uh, function would be analytic and the formula for the uh, derivative at that point could be given as the integral of this one. Let us see that is how we can obtain it. So, first we will go uh, for proving this result using the Cauchy integral formula. Uh, first we will go with the first derivative and then second derivative and then we will just see is that is in the uh, we could find out this formula with the induction. So, let us move to the proof. Let us say this is a domain. Uh, so, when I am talking about D, I am not talking about this complete one, I am talking about in the, the statement of the theorem, the points on C and inside this one. So, uh, let us see is this is a contour and Z naught is a point uh, inside this contour C. So, what we are saying is we would just start with this uh, uh, Cauchy integral formula. If I take uh, the integral along this contour of the function f z upon z minus z naught by Cauchy integral formula it is 2 pi i f z naught or f z naught is 1 upon 2 pi i integral on this close contour c of f z upon z minus z naught. What is this contour c? This contour c now I have taken uh, as a, a one uh, you could say is uh, looking like a circle with the radius d, but it is not actually it could be any contour c. Now, uh, this Cauchy integral formula I would apply to uh, any other point f z naught plus delta z. So, what we do is uh, I take one point z naught plus uh, delta z in a small neighborhood of this z naught that is small neighborhood of z naught if I do take the point z naught plus delta z. So, that is uh, that is small neighborhood I have taken a sense, uh, in a manner such that that is also inside this uh, contour c. So, again using the Cauchy principle formula for that point I could write uh, that uh, f z naught plus delta z as f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z d z integral along the contour c 1 upon 2 pi a. So, now the difference of f z naught plus delta z minus f z upon delta z I would write that is 1 upon 2 pi i integral f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z minus of f z upon z minus z naught. So, this is what we are writing. So, for this f z naught plus delta z this is integral f z d z upon z minus z naught minus delta z and uh, uh, for f z uh, naught it should be f z naught it is f z d z upon z minus z naught where I have taken z naught plus delta z in a small neighborhood of uh, z naught such that this z naught plus delta z is also inside the contour c r is also interior to c. 
Now, from here, uh, if I just tried because this is on the uh, uh, same uh, contour, so this integrand we can join and we could get it after simplifying it. I could write it out that is uh, f z upon uh, uh, this one, we would get is uh, it is only delta z upon z minus z naught delta z into z minus z naught into f z. So, delta z and delta z that is getting cancel it out and I am getting it is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integral along the contour c of f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught with respect to z. What we will go is we will first show that the limit of this is uh, given by the formula that is 1 upon uh, 2 pi i integral uh, along the c f z upon z minus z naught square d z. Uh, so, that we could show that this uh, li uh, limit of this function is that. So, uh, we could show that uh, by the definition of uh, derivative that the derivative of this does exist. Hence, it would be analytic at z naught. So, we will go in that manner. So, let us just write it out what we want. We will write f z naught minus delta z minus f z naught upon delta z minus 1 upon 2 pi i integral f z d z z minus z naught square. So, this uh, function we had already find out that this is equal to this integral M minus I am subtracting this integral. This integral is again on the same contour 1 upon 2 pi i is common. So, again what we do have is integrand is here f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught and here the integrand is f z upon z minus z naught whole square. So, if I take the difference, I would again get uh, the difference as delta z upon z minus z naught whole square z minus z naught minus delta z. So, what we would get is 1 upon 2 pi integral along the contour c f z z minus z naught minus delta z z minus z naught minus f z z minus z naught whole square d z. Now, let us do find out this uh, absolute value of this difference is uh, delta z upon 2 pi i f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught all square. Now, what we would like to show is that uh, this uh, integral should go to uh, 0. So, only then we would be able to say that the limit is existing. So, we are going to prove that uh, as delta z is, is small enough that is from z naught to delta z, uh, z naught plus delta z. If z, uh, delta z is, is small enough, this integral goes to 0. For doing it, uh, we would again use this uh, ML inequality to find it out that is how we are uh, using uh, this Cauchy uh, integral formula and this ML inequality. F z is analytic. So, F z would be less than uh, would be bounded because f z is analytic inside this. So, I could find out one uh, point that is such that f z naught is less than m uh, because it is a continuous. So, in this neighborhood I could find it out that it is less than m that is a very simple result we have done many times till now. Now, since z minus z naught uh, any point on this uh, c is uh, greater than d. Now, d I am taking some distance uh, you, or you could say is d is the is smallest distance from z naught to this contour c. Then for any z on this contour c, z minus z naught would be greater than d. This says is z minus z naught minus delta z that is z naught plus delta z suppose this is the point here would be greater than just using the absolute value in equalities would be greater than or equal to modulus of z minus z naught minus modulus of delta z z minus z naught modulus of this is greater than d, hence this would be greater than or equal to d minus mod of delta z. Now, what it says is my f z is less than m, z minus z naught is greater than d, z minus z naught minus delta z is greater than or equal to d minus delta z. If substitute all these things what I would get this integrand f z upon z minus z naught minus delta z into z minus z naught square would be actually bounded by m upon d square into d minus mod delta z. So, now what we do get is this would be less than or equal to delta z upon that is m is uh, this one m upon d square into d minus delta z this delta z is as such here 
and L. What is L? L will be the length of this contour. Now, whatever be this L, this is fixed one because this contour C is fixed one. So, this L is fixed one. Now, if delta Z is small enough, what I would get is that uh, this would go 0 and this is again a fixed quantity m is a fixed quantity l is a fixed quantity. I could make this delta z such an small such that it approaches to 0 or what we are saying is the left hand side. This is the absolute value of this integral this has to be positive or you could say is non negative. This is less than or equal to a value which can be made arbitrarily small such a small that it can move to 0. So, this must be equal to 0. If this is equal to 0, then what we have got by this definition uh, of now, uh, we had proved that f z naught minus delta z minus f z naught upon delta z, which is minus 1 upon 2 pi i integral c f z upon z minus z square d z. That is what this uh, absolute value difference was from the last slide, if you do remember. This is by the definition of uh, integration or uh, this uh, differentiation this is nothing but the f dash or the derivative of f at z naught. So, this is equal to this one. So, what we had proved is that Cauchy integral from the Cauchy integral formula that if f is analytic in a domain d then uh, f uh, dash or that is f is uh, um, dash z uh, is uh, there and f dash z naught is again we are getting in the form of this integral. You see f of z naught we had started f of z naught as, as the form of integral using the Cauchy principle uh, the Cauchy integral uh, prin uh, sorry the Cauchy uh, uh, integral formula that 1 upon 2 pi i integral over the close contour c f z upon z minus z naught that was uh, where f z was analytic. Since f z was analytic we had shown that now this function we are getting is that is uh, f dash z naught is this one. Now, f dash z naught is again coming in the same form the only thing is that is here we had uh, made it z minus z naught whole square rather than z minus z naught only. Function f z is analytic again in the whole domain d in the contour c and inside this c only point of discontinuity or this uh, where this analyticity would break for this function f z upon z minus z naught square would be only z naught that is again the same kind of conditions are being satisfied. So, in the similar lines if I move that is if I again take f dash z naught minus f dash z naught plus delta z using this formula and then uh, use it uh, factorial. 3 upon 2 pi i and like that one, we would get it that this is again going to prove that is you would get uh, that this limit is going to 0 or you are will be getting is that the formula would be satisfied. The only thing is that is you have to use the uh, 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 distance the minimum distance of z naught to the contour c uh, that we had already used in the similar manner you can move with certain modification small modification that is how to uh, get it uh, these points you will get it square and cubes and all those things. So, here you will get cube and these points as such. So, we would get that is uh, f dash z naught in the similar manner is also analytic and the formula for f dash z naught we would get it like this one. What we are getting is actually z naught the point I have taken any arbitrary point in the interior of C. What it says is if f z is analytic in this whole region, then for any z which is interior to this c because z naught was arbitrary I have not chosen any particular z naught. So, for every interior point in this region f z would be f z uh, would be the formula would be given by the same uh, kind of thing for any z and uh, since z naught is uh, arbitrary what we do say is f dash z uh, will also be analytic in whole region. In a similar manner, we will go again for that f double dash z. So, what we are getting is because z naught is arbitrary, we are getting that if 
f z is analytic in a in a sim, uh, within and on a simple con close contour C, then it is all ordered derivatives that is first order derivative, second order derivative and uh, in a third order derivative they would be existing and they would also be analytic because all of them we would be getting is in the form of this integral formula. So, we had proved this result that this would be uh, analytic and this one. So, now let us see is that is how this uh, formula or this theorem is going to helpful in evaluation of integrals. Let us say is evaluate the integral on any simple close contour C in closing pi i of the this integral cos z z minus pi i whole square d z on a close contour C which is any close contour C in closing pi i. So, let us see this uh, suppose this is a close contour where this pi i is the interior point. Now, I would use this uh, analyticity of the f z uh, and what we have got that uh, formula that f uh, uh, nth derivative of uh, z or rather you could say is just I would use f dash z naught is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integral along the close contour c of f z upon z minus z naught whole square d z. Here you see what the condition I do require is that my f z has to be analytic in the whole region that is inside this c and on the c. Now, I am taking any simple close contour. Now, let us see what is this function cos z. Cos z is actually an entire function and that is why if I do take any simple close contour it does not matter because it is entire function. So, till it is uh, or until it is containing this pi i as interior my this result would hold true. So, uh, f dash z naught 1 upon 2 pi integral along this contour c f z upon d z uh, z minus z naught whole square. So, now what is f dash z naught? f is uh, f z is cos z. So, f dash z would be minus sin z. So, at uh, z naught z naught is the point pi i. So, I would get it minus uh, the 2 pi i minus sin and at uh, pi i. So, this is 2 pi sin hyperbolic pi. So, you find it out that is we could evaluate this integral using this formula for the derivatives. Let us see some more examples. Evaluate the integral on any simple control uh, close contour C in closing minus i for the function z square minus 3 z square plus 6 upon z plus i cube d z. Now, you see this uh, integral of this function, the function which is on the numerator z to the power 4 minus 3 z square plus 6, this is a polynomial we do know that z to the power 4 z square all these are entire functions. So, this is an entire function so, that is why we are able to do it in general that is any close contour in closing i. So, let us see this is a close contour and which is uh, having uh, minus i as to the interior of this one. Then uh, here what I do have is z plus i cube that says is I have to use the second derivative formula. So, this is an entire function f double dash z of this if I do find out that is f dash z would be 4 z cube minus 6 z square it is again derivative I would get 12 z square minus 6. The formula what I would use is f double dash z naught is 1 upon that is uh, 2 upon uh, 1 up, uh, factorial 2 upon 2 pi i that is 1 upon pi i integral along this contour c of f z upon z minus z naught cube d z. Now, here the z naught is now my minus i. So, what I would get is from here this integral this function is f z is z to the power 4 minus 3 z square plus 6. So, I would get this integral as pi i times f double dash z naught that is 12 z square minus 6 evaluated at z is equal to z naught that is z is equal to minus i. So, when I keep z is equal to minus i I would get here minus 12 and this I would get as minus 6. So, minus 18. So, I would get the answer as minus 18 pi i. Let us see one more uh, interesting example. 
evaluate the function e to the power z uh, upon z plus z minus 1 whole square into z square plus 4 integral of this function along the contour c, where my contour c is actually an ellipse whose uh, this x axis is uh, going from uh, minus 3 to plus 3 and or you could say is that is the uh, function which is uh, having uh, the other uh, points of uh, not analyticity outside only point which is analytic where this function is not analytic that is only one is the interior and the point 2 i and minus 2 i are not interior to the close contour c. So, I am having this uh, contour c where 1 is interior, but uh, this 2 i and minus 2 i both are outside this one. So, now I will choose this function e to the power z upon z square plus 4. Of course, e to the power z is entire function, but when I take e to the power z upon z square plus 4, the uh, it will not be analytic at plus minus 2 i, but from the given contour I am finding it out that plus minus 2 i are outside our domain d. So, this function e to the power z upon z square plus 4 is analytic inside and on the contour c. I would like to use this z minus 1 whole square. So, 1 is inside this one. So, I would uh, go with the first derivative f dash z of this one would be e to the power z z square uh, plus 4 minus uh, 2z into um, e to the power z upon z square plus 4 whole square. So, f dash z naught using this formula again 2 pi i integral along the contour c f z upon z minus z square d z where z naught I will take as 1 I would get this integral as e to the power z z square plus 4 minus 2 z upon z square plus 4 it should be whole square at evaluated at z is equal to 1. This is your uh, evaluated at 1 you will get at 6 e pi over 25 i. Now, here what we have done is that we have taken uh, analytic function on a simple close contour and inside that one that is we have talked about the derivative of the analytic functions inside a closed contour and on uh, the closed contour. Let us uh, make this uh, result little bit more uh, general. Let us talk about the functions defined by the integrals. Let C be any curve and G s is a continuous function on C. Now, define uh, a function g capital G as the integral of uh, g s upon s minus z uh, with respect to s on the con this path c, where this z is not on the path c. So, let us see that is what I am saying is suppose c is any curve. So, I am not talking about simple closed curve, it is any curve and this orientation let us say is that is this manner then we are defining and we are having g which is not an analytic function we are having it as a continuous function on this curve c and now i am defining one more function capital g on uh, a capital g at a point z which is not on c uh, that is any other point here z i am taking and i am defining it the function at this point using the function on this uh, path integral of this. So, we are saying is g s upon s minus z d s on this path integral for any z which is not in c. Now, if uh, I have defined this one now what I would like to say that uh, this function capital G which we have defined as the uh, integral of this one this is actually analytic and uh, if this is analytic it is all our derivatives are existing and they would also be analytic. So, we are now moving a little bit further 
not on any simple closed curve and not starting with this function f to be analytic in that domain we are starting with any continuous function g. So, for that let us uh, let us have to another point say in the small neighborhood of this uh, z as z naught plus delta z. So, by this uh, definition which we had made at this point also I could uh, uh, the integ uh, this point the function would be again the integral along uh, this path of g s upon s minus z minus delta z. So, this would be because z this z plus delta z is also outside this path c. So, it is g s upon s minus z minus delta z d s along this path c. Now, what I will again go with the first definition of the derivatives and I will show that is d g z plus delta z minus g z uh, its difference uh, divided by the delta z should go to uh, some limit and that limit must be the derivative of this function. So, that uh, limit uh, we will find out again the form of integral. So, let us first move this the difference of function g at z plus delta z minus that function g at z divided by delta z. So, this 1 upon delta z is as such this difference of these two integrals. So, I would write it as integral on the path c this g s is taken common and what is being here is 1 upon s minus z minus delta z minus 1 upon s minus z. Simplify it I would get s minus uh, z minus s minus z minus delta z that is would get here delta z upon s minus z minus delta z into s minus z. So, we would get 1 upon delta z g s s minus z minus delta z into s minus z and delta z. So, that delta z and delta z would get cancel it out and I would get that uh, g of z minus uh, del d of z plus delta z minus g z upon delta z minus integral c of g s upon s minus z square d s. Now, you see is that is I am just moving in the same manner as we have moved for the analytic function f uh, where we have taken is 1 upon 2 pi i factorial n upon 1 upon 2 pi i f z upon z minus z naught to the power n plus 1. So, I am moving the same one that is only thing is that constant 1 upon 2 pi i is not here. So, uh, we just want that is this in uh, derivative of this function must be this function. So, let us just take this one. This one we had find out that this was also integral along the uh, um, uh, path c of g s upon s minus z minus delta z into s minus z. So, now if I do write it out I would get it is 1 upon delta z path uh, integral along the path 1 upon s minus z minus delta z into s minus z minus s minus z whole square g s d s. Again simplify it what we would get we would get delta z g s upon s minus z minus delta z s minus z square d s. That says is that now the difference between these two is this integral. What we have to now show? We have to show that as delta z approaches to 0, this integral must approach to 0. So, that I could say is that the limit of this function is as delta z approaches to 0 is this function or this integral. So, that we would establish that uh, the derivative of this g capital G is this function and um, so this is analytic at any point z. So, now let us uh, move to this one here what we will say we have taken that g is continuous on this path c. Now, let us assume because this is some fixed path let us assume that uh, for some s uh, on this path c my g would attain the maximum value or you could say is m is the maximum of all these points all these points on the path c. So, then g s would be less than this capital M for all s on this path c. Moreover, let us just take uh, the shortest distance from this z to this path c as the d. What it says is uh, for every s on this g uh, on this c my the difference from the s to z should be greater than d. Since, I have taken this the shortest distance from uh, z to this path c. So, z minus s must be 
the absolute value of the distance between z and s must be greater than d for all s in the c. Now, if I take uh, s plus delta z, s plus delta z is in a small neighborhood of uh, z that says is the distance of this s z minus uh, s minus delta z that would be again I am using the simple absolute uh, inequalities would be greater than or equal to absolute value of z minus s minus delta z. Since, z minus s for every s on the path c is greater than d. So, it should be greater than or equal to d minus mod uh, absolute value of delta z. Now, what we have got from here let us see. We have got that for all c this g s is uh, less than bounded by this number m the denominator s minus z square this is uh, less than uh, this is uh, greater than or equal to d square or we could say is 1 upon s minus z square that is bounded by 1 upon d square and 1 upon s minus z minus delta z that is bounded by 1 upon d minus mod of delta z. So, what we have got this complete function that is complete integrand this is bounded by some constant for all s on the c. Now, I will again use my ML inequality. What it says is that absolute value of this integral delta z t g s upon s minus z minus delta z s minus z whole square d s should be less than or equal to mod of delta z m l upon d minus delta z d square. So, we do have that uh, my l is nothing but the length of this path whatever be this length of this path that has to be some finite number m is also some finite number. Now, d is the minimum distance from this uh, path uh, from this point z to this one. So, we are getting is that uh, this is also some fixed numbers. Now, as delta z approaches to 0 this uh, whole right hand side this can be made arbitrarily small while what is the left hand side? Uh, left hand side is your uh, this uh, integral absolute value of this integral this cannot be negative this is a positive. So, a positive quantity can be made smaller than a quantity which can be made arbitrarily small that is it can be it should be equal to 0. So, what we have got this integral was nothing but the difference of this integral is nothing but the difference of these two things that is what I am getting is absolute value of this difference is can be made 0 or in other words what we had got from the definition of the derivative that g dash z which is nothing but z of z plus delta z minus del g z upon delta z as delta z approaches to 0 is integral along the path c g s s minus z square d s. So, now we what we have got rather than uh, working on a uh, analytic function we had worked on first thing on any path c then I had worked on any function which is continuous only. And if I could define a function capital G such that that is integral along that path of the function g s upon s minus z then we are saying is that function is analytic or rather we had shown that at any point z we could define that we could find out it is a derivative is existing. Now, since this derivative is existing and this z I have taken arbitrarily it says is that in whole of this one wherever this my function g is continuous I would get uh, that uh, this uh, uh, derivative of capital G would be existing that says is capital G is analytic and in the similar manner now now capital this g dash z this is again in the form of integral of some function. So, I could say is the function g s upon s minus z upon s minus z you could get. So, again we would be having r we just go like that one and we would be move that is this function would again be analytic and its derivative can be given 2 times integral g s upon s minus z cube d s. So, what we have now shown uh, rather than just having this uh, for analytic functions now we had started with a function 
uh, uh, small g which is just continuous. Now, let us uh, put to the a good use of this result what we have obtained or what we want to say from this result. Let us go back to our uh, derivative of analytic function. Suppose f is analytic in D and C be any simple contour, uh, close contour in D. Then uh, we do know that f z 1 upon 2 pi i integral along this close contour C f s upon s minus z d s. Uh, how we had find it out? This is what is our Cauchy integral formula which says this, where z is interior point of this uh, close contour C. We do know this one. Now, here this small f, if I replace with the uh, uh, that our small g in the previous result, what I would get that this f z would be analytic. This is what we are doing, we are, we are using now. This is a simple close contour c and this is a point z which is interior to this c. Then by Cauchy integral formula, we do know that f z I can write as integral 1 upon 2 pi integral along this contour c of f s upon s minus z d s where z is interior point of this one. Now, this f if I replace with g that is uh, any continuous function not analytic only any continuous function then what we do know is that f z over here just as uh, there now that would be my this is f z would be the capital G z of the previous uh, results which just now we ha I had obtained. So, we would get it that is this f z would be analytic. So, now what we are trying to say that this formula is holding for f analytic. Now, if this constant this is the only thing is that is the constant. If this constant I take it as in any constant and this f I replace with a continuous function only, then I would get that this f the same f is it all right is analytic at z and since this z is any arbitrary interior point of this uh, contour, I would get that this in whole of this uh, interior this function f z would be analytic and its derivative would uh, satisfy the same uh, conditions that is we could the same formula we could find out these derivatives. Now, what we have actually got? Uh, we have got that rather than taking f to be analytic, if I start f to be continuous only, still I could prove that because then I, what I would have this uh, my this this is any contour and here is that uh, the d I would take this smallest distance from z to that contour d uh, that is all. So, we could uh, get that uh, all these results would be holding true my f z would be analytic it will have possess all the derivatives all orders derivatives and those derivatives will also be analytic. Now, uh, what we have got from here? Uh, we have actually proved one important result you see. If f z is continuous in a domain D and if the integral of f z along any close contour C is 0 for every close contour C in D then f z is analytic in D. Now, you see is that is what uh, we are trying to say. So, if my d is simply connected domain then this result is uh, you could treat it as a converse of Cauchy theorem. How we are going to say it uh, like that one? You see just now we had shown that is uh, if this is happening is that for every close contour c in d if this is happening what it says is that this integral uh, this uh, integral of this function f z d z is independent of path because for every close contour c this is 0 that says is whatever be this path c this integral is 0 that says is the integral of this function f z is uh, is uh, independent of path. If it is independent of path then uh, by Cauchy theorem we do know that uh, it must possess some antiderivative that antiderivative should be indefinite integral of this f z that is capital f z or in other words 
then F z would be the derivative of that capital F z. Capital F z is certainly analytic because that is anti derivative of this one. So, now we are having this uh, capital F z in the form of integral of a function F z which is analytic. So, it is uh, all derivatives would be analytic and hence uh, it would uh, go ahead. So, what we say is that F z is analytic. This is what we have that is if f z is continuous and this is happening then f z is analytic in D. This is what is uh, we have proved this the result is known as Morera's theorem. Uh, now, let us move one more application of this uh, Cauchy integral formula Cauchy's inequality. From the analyticity of uh, this uh, uh, anal uh, the function f z we have find it out that the derivative of f uh, nth derivative of f at z naught can be given as by the formula factorial n upon 2 pi i integral along the closed contour c of f z upon z minus z naught to the power n plus 1. Now, let us uh, assume this uh, c is any closed contour let us see if this is a an uh, circle uh, centered at z naught with the uh, radius as r. So, this is uh, c is my z t is z naught plus r e to the power i t where t is ranging from 0 to 2 pi this is the parametric representation of the uh, circle center at z naught with radius as r. Now, the absolute value of uh, 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 the nth derivative of uh, z naught would be absolute value of this one. So, this factorial n upon 2 pi i that is its absolute value would be factorial n upon 2 pi and then multiplied with the absolute value of this integral that is integral along the path c f z upon z minus z naught to the power n plus 1. Now, I have taken this uh, path c as the circle centered at z naught what it says is z minus z naught would be r times e to the power i t and f z uh, is uh, any function. So, I would simply write it out as uh, this is less than or equal to integral of the absolute this is now we are going with the simple result if you have done in the real analysis also that absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value. Now, this absolute value if I do write this would be absolute value of f z upon absolute value of z minus z naught to the power n plus 1. Now, z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 from here I would get r to the power n plus 1 into e to the power i t to the power n plus 1. So, what we would get uh, factorial n upon 2 pi integral along the path c of absolute value of f z upon absolute value of this one. What is the absolute value of this one? r times e to the power i t its absolute value is r only. So, it is r to the power n plus 1. Now, this r I have a chosen some number. So, f is uh, now we are talking about analytic functions f is analytic that says is uh, uh, I could find out some number m such that f z is less than m on this whole contour z c. So, this is bounded on this contour c and by using this m l inequality I could write it out this uh, constant is as such this integral must be less than or equal to m upon r to the power n plus 1 into the length of this path length of this path is that is uh, the uh, um, perimeter of this uh, uh, circle which is 2 pi r what we are getting is factorial n times m upon r to the power n. So, finally, what we have got the result we have got that absolute value of the uh, nth derivative of f at z naught is bounded by a number factorial n into m upon r to the power n where m is uh, your bound of f and r is uh, we have taken a arbitrary number r you could say is the radius for this circle around the point z naught. Now, what it says this inequality you would say is that is how it is going to help this is going to help to get one more important result that is known as Liouville's theorem if an entire function f z is bounded in absolute value for all z then f z must be constant. What we are saying is 
uh, in other words that an entire function can be bounded if and only if that is a constant that is in a reason if it is bounded then it must be a constant. Let us see the proof of this one we will use this uh, Cauchy inequality f z is given as bounded that says is f z should be less than m for all z in that reason by Cauchy inequality what we do get f dash z not should be bounded by m upon r. Now, as r approaches to infinity that is if I am taking r large and large we do get that f dash z not would approach to 0. Since that r if you do remember we have taken the circle around the um, point z naught and that is uh, that is was arbitrary that is radius was arbitrary. So, I can make a very large circle. So, it says is that it should approach to 0 because we are saying is it is bounded and this is an entire function. So, we can take a very large circle. So, as the r is increasing I should get this is 0 approaching to 0 or rather you could say is that the derivative of f uh, z would be 0 because this is at z naught. So, I can use it at any point uh, z that says is uh, my function has to if the derivative is 0 for all z then my function has to be constant. So, since z naught is arbitrary and f z is entire this says is f dash z should be 0 for all z hence f z is a constant what it says is that an entire function cannot be bounded unless until it is constant. What uh, this uh, theorem is saying I can use it in a very nice uh, result let us see. Let uh, I do have a uh, polynomial of degree n. Let us write this polynomial as a n z to the power n plus a n minus 1 z to the power n minus 1 and so on plus a n z plus a naught. Of course, a n should not be 0 why that is why we could say this is of degree n and uh, if I take this uh, uh, rewrite it I take the common z to the power n. So, I could write it as a n plus a n minus 1 upon z and so on. Since I have taken this a n to be not 0. Now, I would like to choose a large r such that for all j my a n minus j upon z to the power j. You see here what I am getting is a n minus 1 upon z here a n minus 2 upon z square and so on. So, a n minus j upon z to the power j is bounded by the absolute value of a n upon 2 n what we are talking about actually for uh, uh, all the jet lying outside the uh, uh, circle uh, radi uh, with the radius r. So, I am choosing a large r such that this numbers they are that is uh, I would uh, if mod z is uh, greater than r we are getting is that they are being bounded by some number like this one. Of course, why I had chosen a n because a n have taken that uh, uh, non zero. So, this absolute value I have taken and this n, this n you would find it out that is why I am choosing it a little later. If this is happening then what? Now, I would use simple absolute value of p z uh, and the uh, inequality involving the absolute values. Since mod of p z would be mod of this one so which could we could write mod of uh, this uh, first uh, bracketed value into mod of z to the power n. So, mod of z to the power n as such I have kept. Now, see this bracketed value this is the sum of many values using this inequality of absolute numbers first I am taking this a n out. So, mod of a n minus mod of a n plus 1 a n minus 1 upon z and so on plus a 1 upon z to the power n minus 1 plus a naught upon z to the power n. Again for this one again I would use the inequality that inequality what now I would use not this one that I would use mod of x plus y is less than or equal to mod of x plus mod of y that will give me that is this one would be smaller than or equal to mod of this plus mod of this and so on and since it is in the negative sign it will again be greater than or equal to. So, I would get is greater than or equal to mod of a n and this here this inequality mod of a n minus 1 upon z minus minus so on mod of a 1 upon z my 
to the power n minus 1 minus a naught mod of a naught upon z to the power n and this uh, z to the power n is as such and this complete absolute value is outside. Now, from here since uh, we had assumed that for z greater than r a n minus j upon z to the power j in absolute values this is bounded by a n upon 2 to the power n that says is if I take the minus sign this would be greater than or equal to minus of a n upon 2 n. So, now let us substitute this. So, this should be greater than a n is as such this should be greater than mod of minus of mod of a n upon 2 n and so on everything I am replacing with mod of a n upon 2 n. Now, how many terms we do have a naught 2 a n minus 1 that is n terms. So, I am having this n terms like this one n terms like this one if I add up these n terms like this what I would get n times mod of a n upon 2 n that is mod of a n upon 2. So, what I am getting is uh, this is a n minus mod of a n upon 2 or that is same thing as mod of a n upon 2 mod of mod of a n upon 2 and uh, this is holding true when z is greater than r z is greater than r means is uh, this would be greater than r. So, I am getting is it is greater than mod of a n upon 2 and uh, this absolute value of z to the power n we could write as uh, absolute value of z to the power n. Now, let us see what we have got. We have got that p z is greater than or equal to absolute value of a n upon 2 into modulus of z to the power n for all z greater than r. Now, suppose my this p z is not 0 for any z in this whole region. Then what I would get is that 1 upon p z is less than uh, 2 upon mod of a n into mod of z to the power n. So, this is because mod of z is greater than r. So, in this reason it should be 2 upon mod of a n into r to the power n. So, now if uh, 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 what it uh, simply says is that if for all z p z is not 0 then 1 upon p z is bounded in the reason mod z is less than or equal to r because uh, p z is bound bounded above by in the reason mod z greater than r. So, 1 upon p z is bounded in the reason mod z less than or equal to r. Hence, by Lavalier's theorem, Lavalier's theorem says is if the function is entire and bounded, then it must be constant. So, the function p z is uh, 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 not 0. So, 1 upon p z is entire function and bounded. So, it must be some con constant a which is not 0. Hence, p z is b because we have taken that p z is not 0 for any z. So, whatever 1 upon p z that constant cannot be 0. So, what it says is that p z would be 1 upon a that is b some other constant. Now, what we have got the result that if p z is not 0 for any z then it is a constant. So, what we have got p z is constant if p z is not 0 for any z and this gives us the actually the fundamental theorem of algebra which says is any polynomial p z of degree at least 1 has at least 1 z naught such that p z naught would be 0 because the proof you could say is by contradiction as in the previous one we have slides we have done that you could treat it as a proof with the contradiction that is you can assume that p of z naught is there is no z such that p of z is 0 then we do get that p z would cannot be a polynomial of degree n then it must be a constant. So, this is the fundamental theorem which says is that for any polynomial of degree n it must have at least n uh, at most n uh, um, roots that is what you have done in the uh, algebra, but not the proof the proof is here. So, we have got one important result over here also. So, we had learned that how this Cauchy integral formula is playing magic not only evaluation of the integrals, but in the proof of certain basic or very 
uh, important results in the analysis and algebra. So, we had learned today the Cauchy integral formula, its application that is all. Thank you.